Hey, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit since uh, I made a video. I uh, had a lot of work lately, so I haven't been, had much time to uh, ride. Actually did ride uh, last week on the 4th of July. I did like about 120 miles, uh, but I went with some new people. I didn't feel like uh, trying to video something on uh, with new guys. So anyways, long story short, um, the Continental Divide ride is coming up pretty soon. I think we got about five weeks left, so I am in the shop today, as you can see behind me. Um, got uh, my buddy's KTM 1090 kind of pulled apart. I'm putting a whole bunch of parts on his bike for him. Uh, I got the Tenere 700 over there, and Lazy Dog laying behind it. Anyways, I uh, figured I'd kind of go over what we got going on in the shop and uh, give you guys an update of where we're at, getting ready for that Continental Divide. It's going to be about uh, a total of 4,000 miles. The actual divide route is 3,200 miles. Um, we've got some uh, travel miles in there as well. So uh, super excited about the ride. It's crazy to um, actually start planning for a ride like this when you're gonna live off the bike for almost three weeks. Uh, we're planning about 15 days on this trail itself and we're gonna be pretty much camping most of the time. We'll probably have about four to five nights of hotels but otherwise camping. So let me give you a run now of what we got going on. So I'll start with my buddy's uh, KTM. So as you can see, hopefully you can hear me pretty well, but we got his KTM pulled apart. It's a KTM 1090 2018. Uh, we're doing quite a few upgrades to it. Um, he already had the high fender on it. We're doing uh, the Cyclops headlight uh, upgrade. So he's getting some new, sorry, crazy mess. I know this is what happens when you're in a rush or don't have time to clean up after every time you work. But anyways, don't mind the mess, but Doing the Cyclops uh, LED headlights uh, upgrade. Those things are crazy bright. I was actually pretty impressed. We already got them plugged in. Uh, I got to wire up a new GPS mount for him. He's going to be running the same GPS as me. It's going to be the Montana 700i uh, with the inReach function. But uh, yeah, so we got to wire that in. Uh, we also are upgrading his intake with the uh, Rottweiler uh, intake manifold. Basically, it takes, uh, takes away the stock air filter, uh, I'll pull it up for you guys here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. Uh, so this is the stock air filter. As you can see, it's just a standard paper air filter. It clogs up super quick. Um, unfortunately, with these KTM 1090s, they are a nightmare to change the air filter out. You have to pull off, literally pull off the entire fuel tank to get to the, uh, um, get to the air filter. So we are getting rid of this guy, throw that out of here. And we're gonna put in the Rottweiler uh, intake manifold. So basically this is an entire foam filter, it actually has an outerwear filter as well to help with uh, um, keeping it clean. So this thing will have a lot more longevity on the trail. We won't have to clean out the air filter uh, on the trailer, pull the tank or do anything, hopefully, ideally. Uh, so we're doing that, getting rid of some uh, canister and SAS delete stuff. Of course it's off-road use only. Um, anyways, doing that, we got uh, put some bigger adventure pegs on here. It's funny that these big bikes come with these little tiny pegs. So we got the big uh, pegs on there. We're gonna change out his uh, chain to a new gold uh, gold chain. Uh, it's the X ring chain. We also upgraded his uh, master cylinder for his, um, or sorry, his slave cylinder for his uh, clutch. Uh, so we didn't have any problems on the trail. We're gonna do a service on it. Yep. So just kind of going through the whole bike, get everything all done. Yeah, he's gonna be running, we just installed the Moscow Moto bag mount, so he's running the soft panniers, um, which are super nice, tons of room, He's ha and then the duffel bag on top. So yeah, that's kind of where he's at on his bike. Um, I'll be uh, finishing up most of that today, hopefully. Ideally, we're waiting on one part to come tonight. Uh, found a little loose grommet, so we had to order that from KTM. But getting that all done and dialed in, so his bike will be pretty much ready to go. Uh, he can put some miles on it before we leave to make sure the chain stretch and everything's good. Uh, we can do some shakeout miles, but yeah, that thing should be hopefully done today, ideally, if I have enough time. Uh, but yep, they come to my bike. My bike's uh, pretty good to go. Uh, go. We uh, just got a few. I got a few little odds and ends I need to do. I need to do a service. Um, I think I'm actually. I might change out my chain. Not quite sure. Still debating on that. Uh, I might just put a new chain on there just uh, for good measure. I got some new tires over here. Let me show you what we got here. So again, don't mind the mess. Uh, running the uh, Motaz, Motaz Rouse tires. I've ran these on all my bikes and I'm super happy with them. They're at least, they're about a five, 6,000 mile tire. So we'd easily be able to get this ride done with them. They're great off-road. Um, 
Some people say they have problems with the front tire on the highway at speeds. Um, I don't think it's that bad, to be honest with you. It does fine. I think it's, uh, it, has, it does chase rain grooves a little bit. Um, it is an 80-20 tire, so obviously it's quite a bit more aggressive for off-road, but that's kind of what we're looking for. I'd rather have a safe tire off-road and just ha handle it on-road, but I've pushed these tires on mountain roads, and they, they do great. I can't speak enough about these tires. So we'll get these tires on right before we leave, probably like the week week we're gonna take off. I'll put these brand new tires on so we're leaving on brand new tires. Um, in this gigantic mess of stuff over here, I'll be running the uh, Moscow Moto um, Reckless 80. It, uh, it's their soft uh, pannier kit, actually non-pannier uh, Reckless system. So 80 liters plus uh, I'll have a 20 liter, uh, 15 liter backpack and some uh, some uh, crash bar bags that I'll keep some stuff in there. So all in all, I'll give an update when I get all that installed and kind of give you guys a walk around on the bike once it's ready to go for the uh, for the ride. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. So I'll uh, give you a little quick view of the bikes again. So yeah, we'll get this thing uh, knocked out today. We'll get rid of this canister delete. Got an off-road dongle. Um, I think that's pretty much it uh, I got left. We obviously needs to get a good a good wash and clean and go through, but yeah, that's where we're at on this. And then this bad boy, I I cannot say enough about this bike. Um, I did actually go in the uh, Pre Run Moto their uh, their rear rack system and their sidebars. Basically, these little guys right here are sweet because what they do is they are like a pannier soft pannier soft pannier rackless holder that kind of keeps the bags off the plastic so it won't rub away at the plastics so the basically the uh, panniers soft panniers will um, sit right here and they won't rub also got the tie down so i removed the um, passenger foot pegs and put here so now i can put the straps through there a lot cleaner look and then i do have a little exhaust shield that goes that comes with the kit that goes on the exhaust so um, all in all, super happy with this bike. I cannot say enough about this bike. I actually had the KTM 1090 and the KTM 990. Uh, I've gone to this bike since, and I don't know, something about this bike, it just feels feels better, rides better, uh, and I think I feel like it's more reliable too, to be honest with you. Um, there's not, it's not a, um, it's not a hydraulic clutch. It's not a electronic throttle. It's all cable driven. And uh, sometimes uh, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, dumb things are better uh, instead of a smart electronic and hydraulic stuff that's a pain in the uh, butt to fix and uh, work with. Um, sometimes cables are just better. So, uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, that's where we're at. So wish me luck with all this uh, stuff here. I got quite the mess I got to clean up today, but yeah, we're kind of kind of crunching right now, trying to get stuff done, limited time to get everything done, uh, but that's where we're at. I know this is kind of a dumb, boring video, but at least you kind of guys saw what's going on, where we're at, and what it takes to uh, get bikes ready for a big ride like this. Um, we're actually having a meeting with the guys today because we're all spread out. One guy's in Arizona, I'm in California, and I think one of the guys is coming is from Australia. So we're all getting on a meeting today to uh, kind of go over the plan, make sure everybody's on board. So we, uh, not everybody's bringing double stuff. I don't think we need four guys bringing tools. We don't need four guys bringing pots. So we're gonna kind of split up some of the stuff today for that, uh, so everybody knows what they need to bring for our trip. But that's where we're at. Um, again, sorry if it's kind of a boring, just talking a lot, but hey, sometimes all, sometimes the videos aren't the most uh, magical things. This is where we're at with uh, the plan. We'll get these bikes ready. And then uh, my, next, my next video will probably be the update of packing this thing up with all the gear on it, and uh, hopefully maybe one more ride video uh, before uh, we head out for the ride. And then I'll do tons of videos. I'm gonna try and video every single day of that ride so you guys can follow along and I'll put a whole together a whole series. So, all right guys, uh, good talking to you. Hope you somewhat enjoyed this video. If you didn't, sorry, if you did, great. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. You guys have a great day, see ya.